Welcome back everyone. On today's build video we are going to be showing you how to assemble an XY table. This design is very, very cool. It's a great example of the modularity of our system and how these actuators can mount together using the extra large plates. It's rigid. We have lead screw driven actuators here on both of our C-beam using extreme wheels. This thing is awesome. Definitely looking to inspire you guys to come up with new designs. This is just a great example. It's actually what we use on our builds. Can't wait to start this build video. So let's go ahead and start building. Alright, so on this first step we are going to assemble our wheels. So go ahead and locate one of your wheel kits and I'm going to show you how to assemble your extreme wheel. So when you unload the contents you should have an extreme wheel shell, two of your open built bearings, two of your precision shims, and one of your nylon hex nuts. So these two parts are going to be used later in our additional steps. For assembling the wheel, we're just going to go ahead and grab our wheel shell, one of our open built bearings, snap that into place, flip your wheel around, make sure you uh, put your precision shim in the middle here, and then lock it in with your additional bearing. So that's how you assemble your extreme wheels. These additional parts, like I said, are going to carry over to our additional steps. So let's go ahead and assemble the additional seven wheels that we have, and let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys, so we're moving forward here. So on the step, we're going to require our extra large gantry plate, four of our 27 millimeter screws, four of our extreme wheels that we've already assembled, two of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, four of our precision shims, and four of our nylon hex nuts. And these four items here, four and four, those are going to be with your wheel kit. So we've carried these over into the next step. All right, so to get started here, guys, we're just going to go ahead and take our 27 millimeter screws and run them through each one of our corner holes here of the extra large plate. And flip it around. And then we're going to start our stack configuration. So starting with our fixed wheel side first, which is the smaller holes on the plate. As you can see on our top portion here, the holes are larger, and that's for our centric spacer. It works as a cam to rotate and tighten your wheels to the rail. I'll show you here, as you can see, we have an offset center on our eccentric, and that's for the purpose of adding that preload or tightening to your rail. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our fixed wheel side first. And the reason it's called a fixed wheel side is because those do not move. So that's going to stay against the rail while your eccentrics are adjusted. Let's so go ahead and put 6 millimeter aluminum spacer on each screw. And then followed by your precision shim. And your wheel next. Alright. What I like to do is go ahead and thread our nylon hex nut on top of the screw. It just helps with the assembly process. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to our eccentric side. So with the eccentric, you're going to have a 6 millimeter stamp here. And that's going to be your fully open position. So what I mean by fully open is your wheels are going to be the furthest off that they can possibly be. And that's to fit onto your rail. And then from there, you're going to adjust your eccentric to tighten that to the rail. So we're going to face that out away from our fixed wheels. That way we have that fully open position. And the eccentric should fit right into the bottom hole here. So as you see, we have a lip on the eccentric. That's going to snap into place in these larger holes. So make sure that they do. All right, then add your precision shims and your wheels next. And then thread on your nylon hex nuts. All right, so let's tilt this to the side. We're going to go ahead and tighten down these wheels. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and check our eccentrics. Inevitably, these do move when you're tightening down the wheel. So let's go ahead and adjust that six millimeter stamp back to the open position, like so. And this one's good here. All right, so we have our wheels assembled to our extra large gantry plate. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so on this step, we are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block. 
to our extra large gantry assembly that we have so far. So in this step we're going to need our assembly, our anti-backlash nut block, two of our hex nuts that come with the kit, as well as two of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, and two of our precision shims. So with the anti-backlash nut block inside your kit you're going to see a grub screw with a thin hex nut. And what I do with that, this is to prevent backlash in your system. But the way that these anti-backlash nut blocks are set up, they already prevent backlash. This is just if your system wears down over the years, you can add a tighter feel to this uh, backlash nut block. So basically what I do is I put the grub screw inside and I thread it all the way just to where it's kissing the back end here of the Delrin. And then I just uh, thread on the hex nut and uh, you're good to go there. So I wouldn't concern yourself with that too much. It's really not necessary. As I said before, the anti-backlash nut block already prevents backlash stock. So that's just an extra perk to that item. So let's go ahead and start off here by taking notice to our two holes here on the extra large gantry plate. These are going to be the two holes that we're going to run our screws through. The reason for being those two holes is because we have our eccentric side here and our fixed wheel side here. The lead screw is going to run through the plate like so. So we need our nut block to be on that back end like so. That's so the lead screw can run through. Alright, so let's go ahead and feed our 20 millimeter screws through this front portion. And you can uh, put your fingers there and hold these screws into place, adding our 3mm aluminum spacer, and then our precision shims. And then we're going to go ahead and put on our anti-backlash nut block, making sure that our hex design here is facing us. And the reason for that is we're going to actually insert our nylon hex nuts into these, these grooves here. All right. And we're going to make sure that we center our anti-backlash nut block like so. That looks great. So let's go ahead and put on our nylon hex nuts. And what I do is I just place them on top and I let the screws do the work. Alright, so let's go ahead and tighten that. And make sure you keep your anti-backlash nut block straight. That way the lead screw can fit into that uh, block without any issues or adjustments. So just align it as best that you can. Alright, perfect. That looks excellent guys. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright guys, so moving forward here, we are going to be assembling not only our wheels, but also our anti-backlash nut block onto this extra large gantry plate. And this is going to be for the mating process between the two extra large gantry plates for our XY table. So to start off guys, we're going to do this the same exact way we did our other plate. So we're going to go ahead and run our screws through each corner. And let's start our stacking configuration with our fixed wheel side first. Remember those are going to be the smaller holes here. And then we have our larger holes here for our centrics. And then add your precision shims. And your extreme wheels on top. And if you see that you have one of the shims moved over slightly, all you have to do is adjust it with your ball driver. Or you can actually just spin it on the wheel and it will find the center of gravity. So either way will work. Alright, so let's go ahead and cap those with our nylon hex nuts. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to our centric side, making sure that our stamped end is facing away from our fixed wheel side. Let's go ahead and put our precision shims on next. Alright, followed by our wheels. And then our nylon hex nuts. We'll thread those on. Alright, let's tilt the system to the side and let's tighten down those wheels. Alright, and let's adjust our eccentrics, make sure that they're all facing the right direction. Alright, perfect. So now we have our wheels assembled, let's go ahead and move on to our anti backlash nut block mounting. So remember, we're going to go ahead and put it into these two holes since our lead screw is going to be running through the plate. So we have our centric side and our fixed wheel side. So we're going to put our 20 millimeter screws right here. 
Let's go ahead and flip that around. Add your 3mm aluminum spacers on your screws and followed by your precision shims. And take your anti-backlash nut block and remember the hex side is going to be facing you and then we're going to center that onto our plate. Let's go ahead and add your nylon hex nuts next. And let's go ahead and tighten that down. Once again, make sure that the anti-backlash nut block is straight, guys. It's very important. All right, perfect. So that assembly is complete. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so we're moving on to the next step here. In this step, we are going to mate our two extra large gantry plates. So we're going to require eight of our 12 millimeter screws. And these screws are going to insert one side of the extra large plate and thread in to our other. So as you can see we have threaded holes here on each one of our extra large plates on these corners. Same with our additional. So one, two, three, and four. The way that I have these plates configured currently is so I can flip this plate on top of the other and mount these properly. So in order to do that you need to adjust your plates in the same direction that I have mine. So essentially, you should see your screws here on the side, and then your other plate, you should see them here on the bottom. So when I mate these, I'm going to have a lead screw running through the plate horizontally, and on this plate, you'll see that the lead screw will run vertically. Okay? So let's go ahead and mate these plates. So by flipping my plate over, I'm going to give myself access to the threaded holes here on my second plate. So these aren't going to be threaded here on top, but the ones on the bottom will be. So let's go ahead and stick our screws through these holes. And let's tighten them down. And the same for the bottom two holes here. Alright, and make sure that those are all tight and you want to make sure that your plate is square onto the other one it's mating to so that looks excellent alright perfect so let's go ahead and flip this plate over and we're going to go ahead and add our 12 millimeter screws to these four holes and you can see how strong the system is going to be because we have eight screws in total mating these plates it's excellent Alright, perfect. So now our plates are mated. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright guys, so moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our actuator. So we're going to need our assembly with our mated pair of extra large gantry plates. We're going to need one of our NEMA 23 motors, two of our C-beam end mounts, eight of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our 8 millimeter bearings, two of our 8 millimeter shims, two of our 8 millimeter lock collars, and these come in a kit. All I've done is put the set screw into uh, the grooved hole here in the lock collar just to make it a little bit easier to assemble. So if you haven't, go ahead and do that first. Our additional parts are going to require so our two M5 50mm screws, two of our 40mm aluminum spacers, our flexible coupling, our lead screw, and our ball driver set and spanner wrench. So to start off here guys, we're going to go ahead and slide our plate onto our 250mm C-beam. So I'm going to start with the vertical end first. So this is horizontal, this is vertical. I'm going to go ahead and slide this into the C-beam. Just like so. And you'll see that this is really loose. So we need to adjust our eccentrics first. So on our eccentric side here you'll see that our six millimeter stamps are facing us so let's go ahead and adjust those so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the right and I'm gonna adjust them in the same direction here and then I'm gonna test for proper preload alright so I can't flick that wheel at all 
that's actually tight onto the track. That actually looks really good. So let's go ahead and go to the back wheel here. This one also, I'm not able to flick. If it was loose, while I'm flicking like this, you'd actually see the wheel rotate. So that would mean it's too loose. Now if this was too tight, you would not be able to spin it out without the gantry plate moving. So you can see that I can spin that without the gantry plate forcing its way down the track. That looks really good actually. Awesome. So let's go ahead and test that and make sure there's no play. No play whatsoever. That's a really tight lock with our centric, so that's excellent. So now let's go ahead and move forward here. So starting with our C beam end mounts, I'm going to make sure that this recessed hole here, this is for our bearing, is facing inward. So let's go ahead and place that. And taking our 20 millimeter screws, I'm going to thread those in to the C beam because the C beam is already pre tapped. Alright, let's go ahead and tighten those down. Alright, make sure all those screws are tight. Excellent. So let's go ahead and rotate this system to the side. Let's do our other C-beam end mount, making sure that the recessed hole here for our bearing is facing inward. Now let's go ahead and tighten those 20 millimeter screws into place. Alright, perfect. So now that our C-beam end mounts are in place, we're going to go ahead and grab our NEMA 23 motor. Taking notice to the flat part of the shaft here on the motor, we're going to go ahead and attach our flexible coupling using the quarter inch bore, not the 8 millimeter side that's going to be attached to our lead screw. So aligning it here with my set screw, I'm going to lock that into place. Alright, and then on the other side, there's an additional screw. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down as well. Perfect. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and mount our motor. So as you can see on the C-beam end mounts, we have two screws here for the purpose of mounting the motor. So let's go ahead and run our two 50 millimeter screws through the bottom portion of the motor. And slide on your 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. And let's tighten that down to these screws here. Alright, so now that we have this attached, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the motor down completely. I want to make sure that that's nice and tight. You don't want any movement in your motor. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and set this system down to the side. And now we're going to go ahead and run our 250 millimeter lead screw through, adding some additional parts. We're going to add our 8 millimeter bearing first, our 8 millimeter shim, making sure that the flat side of the shim is facing your bearing. So you see that you have a rounded side here that should be facing your lock collar. Go ahead and place on your lock collar. And we're going to keep these parts to the end towards this CV min mount, and we're going to run this lead screw into our anti-backlash nut block. And turning to the right, we're going to feed that through the anti-backlash nut block. Alright, so now that I see my lead screw is protruding out, I'm going to go ahead and add additional parts, starting with my lock collar on this side, my 8mm shim, my 8 millimeter bearing and let's continue to feed that through until we reach the other side to our flexible coupling. Alright so now we're at the flexible coupling you'll see that your lead screw here is inside the recessed hole here of the C-beam end mount that's exactly what you want and now we want to lock in our bearing to that hole on the C-beam end mount 
making sure that our lock collar is pressing tightly against the shim. We're going to tighten that down, guys. We want to make sure that's nice and tight. We don't want any movement in this lead screw. All right, so now we're going to move to this side. Same thing, we're going to lock in that bearing. Pressing with our lock collar, we're going to tighten that down. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and lock in our flexible coupling to the lead screw. So starting with our set screw end first, we're going to tighten that down. And then I tighten down my other screw. All right, now when we move our flexible coupling, you'll see that the gantry moves. That's perfect. That's looking great, guys. So make sure there's no play here in the lead screw. So here I see I see some movement. That's not that's not all right. So we're going to go ahead and adjust our bottom lock collar here, making sure that it's completely tight. Sometimes what happens is the threads of the lead screw don't grip onto the set screw properly on the lock collar. So you need to adjust the angle that you tighten it and tighten that down. Yeah, there's no movement now. That's perfect, guys. All right, so let's set the system to the side and let's move on to the next step. All right, guys, so moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our lead screw motor to our 250 millimeter C-beam that's going to be attaching to our XY assembly. So let's go ahead and gather these parts. We need our NEMA 23 motor, our lead screw, two of our C-beam end mounts, two of our 8 millimeter shims, two of our 8 millimeter lock collars, two 8 millimeter bearings, one of our flexible couplings, two of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our 50 millimeter screws, and eight of our 20 millimeter screws. We're also going to need our ball driver set along with our spanner wrench. So to start this off guys, we're going to go ahead and grab our 250 millimeter C-beam and we're going to run it into our wheels here on our extra large plate. So I'm going to simply slide this on like so. Feeling that it's extremely loose, we're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics which are on this side. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate these eccentrics to the right. All right, so that's that's too loose right there. I'm able to spin it out without any type of force. And that's perfect right there. Let's check our other wheel. That's too loose, so we're going to keep rotating to the right until we find that proper preload. All right, that's perfect. So as you can see, there is no movement here in my system. That's exactly what we want, guys. All right, so now let's go ahead and I'm just gonna turn this 90 degrees. That way I can have access to my C-beam here. We're gonna go ahead and latch on our C-beam end mounts, making sure that our bearing side is facing inward. And let's go ahead and run our 20 millimeter screws through the C-beam. All right, so now let's go ahead and turn this system, giving us access to the back end of the C-beam. We're going to go ahead and latch on our additional C-beam end mount. All right, perfect. So now our CV min mounts are in place. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to our NEMA 23 motor. And let's go ahead and attach our flexible coupling, making sure that the quarter inch bore is attached to the motor shaft. And making sure that our set screw latches onto that flat portion of the motor shaft. All right, rotate that around. We're going to tighten down that additional screw. So now we're going to go ahead and attach our motor to our C-beam end mount. So I like to keep my wires hanging down. So I'm going to run both of my 50 millimeter screws through the top two holes here on the motor. And then add the 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. And let's go ahead and tighten those into the holes here on the C-beam end mount. All 
right, make sure that that's nice and tight. We don't want our motor loose. That looks excellent, guys. All right, so we're going to go ahead and flip this again. So we just want to expose your here to the C-channel. Let's go ahead and add your lead screw and your additional parts. So an 8 millimeter bearing, our 8 millimeter shim, and our lock collar. From there, we're going to go ahead and find the anti-backlash nut block and screw your screw to the right until you see it protruding out of the other end. We're going to add our additional parts. All right, so we see the other end. Let's go ahead and add our lock collar on this side first. Then our 8mm shim. And our 8mm bearing. And let's go ahead and feed that all the way into our flexible coupling. Alright, so we're all the way into the flexible coupling here. So we're going to attach these parts to the C-beam end mount. Making sure that that lock collar is tight against the 8mm shim, we're going to tighten that down. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and turn this. And we're going to lock in this lock collar too. Making sure that bearing is fully inserted into the C-beam end mount, guys. There's no movement in that lead screw, that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and tighten down our flexible coupling. Alright guys, so on this last step we are going to be putting our feet onto our XY table. So in this step we're going to go ahead and locate four of our cast corner connectors, four of our wood screws, four of our 10 millimeter M5 screws, four of our drop-in T-nuts, and our tooling we're just going to use our ball driver here. So what we're going to do is take one of our cast corners, slide in one of our 10 millimeter screws here and what I like to do is thread on the drop in T-nut it's just easier for me to assemble it this way um, if you prefer to put the drop in T-nut into the track and mount it that way that's completely fine whatever works for you so what I'm going to do is find good placement here on my bottom beam if you need to you can move the top axis here out of the way alright so I'm just going to place this into one of the channels, make sure it's aligned properly, and then I'm just going to tighten that down. And make sure it's square on the C-beam, that way you can get a flush mount to wherever you're mounting it, on a table or on a, a different surface. You just want to make sure that that's square. Alright, that one looks good, so we're going to do the same process for our additional sides. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect, that looks great, guys. So now we have our feet onto our XY table. And the purpose for doing so is as you move this actuator up and down, the weight is going to pull our bottom actuator on its side. So basically we're gonna mount it into a table and keep this whole system secure. So that's what our additional wood screws are for. So if you have a surface that you wanna mount this on, basically you're just gonna go ahead and grab these screws and use that to mount your cast corners to your surface. All right, but this looks excellent, guys. We have a fully functional XY table now, and this looks excellent. All right, guys, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got more stuff coming out all the time. Definitely keep up to date, and uh, we'll see you on future builds.